This is uh, Will Snyder. Uh, we're basically putting in a permaculture garden here. Um, started out with the uh, property as it was. I do have video. Um, we took out some bushes and trees. Um, today we are putting in 11 fruit trees. Into fruit trees and uh... Uh, four uh, pine trees, some asparagus and raspberry bushes. Building some hugel culture mounds, which are self composting mounds. It is a uh, basically raised bed in German. Right now we need some leaves. Get some leaves. All right. um, and uh, basically, it, it, it allows for nutrients and uh, and moisture to be slowly released into whatever you're planting over time uh, in, in kind of a controlled way. But you, you add a, a good mixture of green and kind of decayed matter to kind of act as a, a sponge, I guess. But uh, we're kind of using like a lasagna layering effect of leaves and dirt and back and forth until it... Is this the same plant? Yeah. That looks, okay. Yeah, yeah leaves, leaves yeah, match. Yeah, it does, yeah. Um, cool. This is uh, vetch seeds. Okay. And uh, they're well, leguminous vetch. And they're... Uh, Leguminous weed, a lot of people think they're a weed, but they actually are the, they add all the nitrogen naturally to uh, whatever you plant. But I think they're, they're most useful around fruit trees because they, they catapult them into growth in the first year or two, you know, very quickly. So How many did you use? I just planted about 10 seeds here per tree. You know, you don't need that many because once, once they get big, they, uh, they create the roots and they basically create all these little nodules on their roots that uh, let's say you were to come back and you don't like them because they're tall and bushy, if you chop off the tops, they will release the nodules into the soil underneath it, which is what you want. Which is the perfect, you want pure nitrogen to be added right to the soil then. You know, you are going to give it, you're going to have to give it nutrients over time if you want it to, to be productive. Uh, this is just a way that uh, uses the resources that are already coming off of your land anyway and uh, just putting it right back where the at the root level where trees and plants can use it. So, um, and, and in holding moisture in the area, you don't want the moisture to leave where you want it. But at the same time, you want uh, all the materials we're adding, whether it's the leaves, the branches, the logs, they're creating air pockets so that over time, you know, uh, the, the root ball will not just sit in moisture and it'll actually have time to air out and dry out and just, it creates the imitation of what a food like uh, at the base of a forest already is doing. Uh, a forest floor is very is soft and, you know, and very thick and you can compress it. And you want to feel that as you probably shouldn't want to trod through a forest floor. You, you, this, it's the same kind of respect. You, you don't want to have to trod through your garden. And uh, just, I mean, by making it in mounds, it's nice to be able to walk around it rather than uh, making it into something more elaborate or larger that you have to make a path through or something. So. When a tree fells, it creates little air pockets and it creates a root ball that it, other things can be opportun, opportunistic and jump in and be able to, to grow and, and have plenty of exposed nutrients as well as all the microbes and all those things. But already there are tons of bugs and whatever we're putting down here and the plants and the rotting materials that at the root level that's where you want them and you want to keep, you want to keep them healthy. So, because a lot of the times when you're adding synthetic things, to uh, add nutrition to your, your fruit trees or your plants that often they're, they're just killed off. Now the best thing about the Hugo culture mounds, they are from uh, European descent, take the logs, it's a self-composting system, it decays, creates their pockets as Gus said. Um, Hugo mound, uh, it's a mini one basically, along the edge of the sidewalk. So you can put, it'll have a mound and then you're having the rain collection that goes around. So the water that's coming off the roof, we're gonna save that. It's going to go into this rain collection area of herbs, different plants, things like that. It'll fill up in the rain, hold there, and then slowly move down with the lay of the land and water the trees, any other mounds that are in there, um, and then that way it's a self-watering system. Windbreak with the north, uh, this is to the north, so in the winter you're going to get the north sun. Uh, we put in the, uh, the tall pine trees as a winter windbreak. We're also, uh, to uh, accentuate that, we're putting in the raspberry uh, and some of the bushes, um, fruit bearing bushes uh, along the way. Um, and then towards the other side of the house over here, uh, we're also um, more mounds um, as the sun from the summer. We're going to get all this um, and move towards the back. 
We did have a couple good placements with one of the trees in the back back there um, to cover the air conditioning unit and some of the side. Here there's a nice bay window um, that can also be used as an internal greenhouse if you don't have an outside one uh, as well. But the ultimate goal of this is to have a self-sustaining, uh, self-providing uh, place of residence. In the center we have a cherry tree and a couple others flanking them on the other side. Um, so basically it's like a colonnade. Yeah, and just basically putting the nutrients in the right place and in, in where it will use it. Whereas nature, it's just going to be sporadic. And, right. and when it happens, it happens type of effect. So. So. And we're just encouraging mother nature to do it yeah. and want to give it all the right variables. So. Absolutely.